Marvel's mean green wrecking machine, the ever-loving Hulk, is a force to be reckoned with. The Hulk has a huge presence in the Marvel Universe. While the Hulk is big enough to smash tanks into other tanks, he's not the biggest character in the Marvel Universe. But size isn't everything, and we're gonna look at some characters where the tale of the tape doesn't tell the whole story when it comes to the Incredible Hulk. Whether it's the comic book Abomination, who was a KGB spy in the wrong place at the wrong time, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe's aging soldier looking for an edge against the seemingly unstoppable Hulk, Abomination is the original, if you can't beat him, join him method of dealing with the Hulk. In the comics, Emil Blonsky's green scaly beast alter ego has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk as well as Thor, and even the Silver Surfer. Initially, Blonsky was exposed to enough gamma radiation to really give the Hulk a run for his money. It's only after General Ross, of all people, steps in that allows Bruce Banner to bleed off enough energy for the Hulk to be able to beat the Abomination. Being comics, Abomination undergoes a series of deaths and resurrections and power add-ons, but in the end, it's always the Hulk who comes out on top. In the MCU, Blonsky's an aging soldier who tries mixing a little super soldier serum with some gamma radiation to give him the necessary edge against the Hulk. But it doesn't prove to be enough, as the Hulk dons a pair of boxing mitts made of cars and takes down this thorny challenger. In the mutant end of the Marvel world, the unstoppable Juggernaut is a clear fan favorite. The stepbrother of Charles Xavier, Kane Marco, aka the Juggernaut, isn't a mutant himself. Resentful of his father favoring Charles over him, Marco finds a jewel from the mystic entity Sidorak that makes him nearly unstoppable, a human Juggernaut. While he has primarily used this power to take his sibling rivalry with the stepbrother to the next level, even going so far as to craft two psionic blocking helmets, it's inevitable that the two unstoppable forces of the Marvel comics would be measured up. With a mystic gem and the power of a deity, plus a foot in height, it would seem like fortune favors Marco, and he has managed to earn a W against the Hulk before. But more often than not, when they've met, the best Juggernaut has managed was a draw. From time to time, the outcome has been the result of someone or something putting their fingers on the scale, though. Whether it's the mutant apocalypse making Hulk the war horseman, or whether it was just the Hulk declaring war on, well, everyone, the Hulk has managed to come out on top. It was still fun to see him square off against Colossus and Deadpool 2, though. Hank Pym's career has been essentially a test of the adage, size does matter. Although he started his superhero run by going small and employing the help of armies of ants, it was only a matter of time before it became clear that whatever you could shrink, you could also make big. Maybe he was tired of Garrett Morris making fun of him on Saturday Night Live. Uh, it's Ant-Man. A-N-T-M-A-N. Whatever the motivation, Ant-Man became Giant Man, or Goliath. Pym's able to grow to a size big enough to palm the Incredible Hulk, but that has proven to be a dodgy proposition for the size-changing scientist. While Pym's strength increases with his size changes, it's no match for the rage machine that is the Hulk. Perhaps the most painful reminder of that comes from the animated Ultimate Avengers, where an enlarged Pym tries to contain an enraged Hulk in his hand, only to have him burst free and grab Giant Man's larynx and give it a death hug. It's certainly a lesson that Pym won't forget anytime soon. While Carl Crusher Creel may have gained the supervillain status of Absorbing Man as Loki's way of getting back at his hammer-swinging stepbrother, the Absorbing Man has since been more of an equal opportunity villain across Marvel stories. A former boxer before drinking Loki's magic liquid that gives him the power to absorb the properties of whatever he touches, separate from his Asgardian-influenced origins, he's even appeared in the MCU as a foil, and sometimes ally of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Creel retains the ability to absorb the properties of whatever he touches, taking on not only the makeup, but in some cases the size of the material, meaning Creel can find himself dwarfing the Hulk. His first attempt at becoming the undisputed champ of Marvel came when he rode in on a comet the Hulk was sent to smash. You heard us right. But even with Comet's power and an attempt to absorb the Hulk power and then bury him under a mountain, it's not enough. Despite these absorbing powers, it hasn't proven enough to hold back Hulk's rage, with the green guy coming out on top every time. Asgard isn't the only pantheon that turns out to be a real place in the Marvel Universe. In order to protect the Earth from the inevitable judgment of the Celestials, the various gods got together and gave a suit of armor made by the Asgardians a little bit of their power, creating the Destroyer. Since you can't have nice things when there's someone like Loki around, the Defender armor has been misused in the past, mostly by Loki. In the MCU, Loki sent the Destroyer to New Mexico to prevent Thor from becoming worthy of Mjolnir again and upsetting his plans in Asgard plan that ultimately backfired. While the armor is incredibly strong, it has been known to be stopped by crushing it under rubble, or even a good old-fashioned pounding, something the Hulk excels at. 
Loki may be the main opponent of Thor, but his main goal is to rule Asgard, as he feels is his right. When the chips are down, he'll protect Asgard even from himself. That doesn't mean Asgard doesn't have other enemies, though. Built in from mythology, the Frost Giants from Jotunheim have destroying Asgard on the top of their wish list. Since Giant is right in their name, it's fairly obvious that they have the size advantage over the ever-loving Hulk. Like any good set of foes, the Giants of Jotunheim have a favorite, a grand champion of breaking things that they can put forward when the stakes are high. And that individual is Ymir, giant even for frost giants, and made of solid ice. While in the comic continuity, Hulk and Ymir have never crossed paths, Ymir did manage to show up in Agents of Smash, the animated Hulk-centric show. They used heat created by Red Hulk to create a weak point that the Hulks and Thor then exploit to burst the ice giant champ apart. The Hulk, all on his own, can create heat through friction, and ice is a very smashable thing. These things combined make Hulk an odds-on favorite in a matchup with Emir. The United States has the Avengers and the X-Men stationed in New York. The UK has Excalibur, and in the great white north of Canada, there's the team known as Alpha Flight. While the membership has fluctuated like any good superhero team over time, one of the more notable members is the hairy giant known as Sasquatch. Like the MCU version of Abomination, how scientist and Green Bay Packer Dr. Walter Langowski became Sasquatch is in part an attempt to be like the Hulk. Some people have weird ambitions. The mystical beast has more than a few feet on the Hulk plus claws and sharp teeth. Since his origins were tied to the Hulk, it stands to reason the two have met, sometimes just to spar and sometimes in anger. Unlike a lot on this list, Sasquatch is able to hold his own, but advantage goes to the Hulk, who, of course, can increase his strength by getting mad. And getting mad is the Hulk's go-to move. America has a spotty record when it comes to making their own Godzilla. With a new franchise enjoying a degree of success now, the 90s saw a less than worthy attempt. And then there's the cartoon. Oh, Godzuki, who thought you were a good idea? Godzilla even made a brief appearance in the Marvel Universe in a 24-issue run in the 70s. Despite appearances, though, American Kaiju is not an attempt to recreate Godzilla. He represents a kitchen sink approach to recreate the super soldier serum that created Captain America, which fills in the missing pieces with a little bit of whatever has created superpowers in the past, including gamma radiation, Connor's formula that created the lizard, and even Pym particles. The result is a very patriotic, yet very Godzilla-like giant monster called the American Kaiju. With the calliope of powers that come with the cocktail of formulas that went into his creation, American Kaiju can be a formidable opponent. While he hasn't met the original Hulk, he has met one of his copycats, and came out on the losing end making it all the more likely that the flag-waving City Smasher would fall to the Incredible Hulk. It should come as no surprise that in the early days, the enemy of super-capitalist Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, tended to be in the form of super-communists. When the very subtle name Boris Bulski sought to impress his communist superiors, he had a suit of armor made to challenge Iron Man by, what else? Making it out of titanium. Lacking Stark's finesse and advanced technology, Titanium Man's armor is much larger, towering over even the Hulk in an effort to get all the Tony Stark beating tech in one suit. Except it didn't work, and Tony beat the Titanium Man over and over and over again. Titanium Man has remained primarily an Iron Man villain, and has wisely steered clear of any quick-to-anger gamma-irradiated rage monsters. Which is good, because he doesn't stand a chance. While Stark has managed to get a W on the Hulk with the Hulkbuster armor, it was a piece of kit specifically designed for taking down a rampaging Hulk by a genius who knows the Hulk, and can work with his alter ego, fellow genius Bruce Banner. Without that advantage, the lumbering Titanium Man does not stand a chance. Asgard is a larger-than-life place, so it stands to reason that many of the actually larger-than-life characters hail from the Norse Kingdom. Norse mythology has an incredible end-of-days belief that in the Marvel Universe turns out to be an endless cycle to feed a mysterious group with the not-at-all-creepy name of those who sit above in shadow. One of the key elements of this end-of-days scenario is the giant wolf Fenris. It's Fenris's job to swallow the moon and the sun to assist in the destruction of Asgard. Hey, we told you it was cool. A massive sun and moon swallowing wolf would be a formidable opponent for anyone. Asgard sure is a weird place. While Fenris hasn't met the green wrecking machine in the comics, his offspring Horfen has. With the encounter going to Hulk, we got a hint at what the matchup with Fenris would look like in the climax of Thor Ragnarok. While the Hulk was fashionably late to the party, he eventually became his smashing self, besting the giant canine and pushing him off the Asgardian bridge into the abyss. 
It's not all KGB agents and copycat armor suits that have menaced Tony Stark's Iron Man. While well, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Iron Man has struggled to have a memorable villain, comic book Iron Man has some of the weirder ones. Not an actor, but another genius, the Mandarin makes use of ten rings made from stolen alien technology, and that's not even close to the weirdest foe that Iron Man faces. The crashed spaceship that the Mandarin gets his rings from is from the planet Kakara Nathara, also known as Maklu 4. Let's just call it Maklu. The Maklu Fluens had planned on taking over the Earth, landing in ancient China when things went wrong. The Mandarin frees Fin Fang Foom only to have to turn to Iron Man to stop him, setting up the shape-shifting dragon as an oddball regular in the Marvel comics. The two have met in the 1602 continuity, where Fin Fang Foom had been wrecking his way through China before encountering an enraged Hulk who killed the extraterrestrial dragon. In the regular continuity, Triple F found himself bested by Squirrel Girl, making it likely Hulk's victory was not a fluke. Who doesn't love Groot? Whether it's the easy-going giant wood companion of Rocket Raccoon from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, or the cute offspring of the fallen Groot in Volume 2, or even the surly teenage Groot of Infinity War, the walking tree with a three-word vocabulary is a fan favorite. Of course, Groot is best known as Rocket's bestie and last remaining member of the Flora Colossi species. But he wasn't the only Flora Colossi to visit the Earth. Originally, an alien tree who invaded Earth to capture and study humans, he was defeated by by termites. He was later revived by Zenmu, an alien creature who spot the Hulk presumably for naming rights since his first appearance was as Zenmu the Living Hulk. Zenmu hoped to use the massive tree alien to take out the Hulk. As a Flora Colossi, this proto-Groot capable of complete sentences roots down temporarily confounding the Hulk, who's accustomed to smashing things. But in short order, the Hulk starts tearing up the ground and smashing what's left with rocks. The voice actor of the MCU Groot, Vin Diesel, has insisted that the cinematic Groot will fight the Hulk at some point, so we may see current Groot get a chance to even the score. Moviegoers might know Sandman as one of the too many villains that cluttered up Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3, played by Thomas Hayden Church. In the comics, William Baker, aka Flint Marco, starts his life of crime after being expelled for throwing a high school football game and punching his coach when he's discovered. He starts his supervillain career when he encounters some irradiated sand, and in true Silver Age comics tradition, he gains the powers and properties of sand, enabling him to gather sand around him to make himself as large as any available sand. sand Sandman has distinguished himself as a perennial Spider-Man villain, earning him a spot in Raimi's trilogy where he was retconned to be the actual killer of Uncle Ben. Remember that? That was one of the stories in that movie. And there sure were a lot of them. As a being made up of granular sand of immense size, Sandman has been a formidable foe to the web-slinger, as sand is hard to web. However, Sandman's prone to other sand-like properties and can be dispersed. One of Hulk's favorite moves is the Thunderclap, which has been known to create a massive massive shockwave that had scattered the Sandman. Sandman doesn't have enough strength to prevent the clap, meaning he should stick with Spider-Man as a foe. While not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, moviegoers were introduced to the superhero team of Big Hero 6. In the comics, they're a Japanese state-sponsored hero team joined by 13-year-old genius Hiro Takachiho and his robot bodyguard Baymax. The film version was best described as loosely inspired, moving the team to the fictional San Francisco, and Baymax goes from being a dragon robot bodyguard to an inflatable healthcare robot built by his brother. Each version shares the ability to increase in size as the situation calls, and eventually they both have offensive powers as well as defensive ones. Clearly, the Baymax with the best shot at the mean green wrecking machine is the comic book version. With his polymantium exoskeleton and the ability to take on the form of a battle dragon or mega mecha, he has the chops to enter into a fight. But the exoskeleton is only good for small ballistic resistance, which for the Hulk is really just a warm up. It's unlikely that Baymax would manage to withstand a Hulk smash onslaught for very long. Fortunately for Baymax, he has several means to remotely assess threats and could avoid the inevitable beatdown. But the animated Baymax might just be too adorable to beat up. The sun's getting low, big guy. Let this one go. Red Hulk is the ultimate expression of the if you can't beat him, join him philosophy of arch-rivaling the Hulk. Sure, we've covered copycat Hulk attempts like Abomination, Sasquatch, and even American Kaiju, but no one hates the Hulk like General Thaddeus E. Thunderbolt Ross. When it comes to hating the Hulk, he was doing it before it was cool. The ultimate bad in-law, he's the father of Bruce Banner's true love, Betty Ross, and the leader of the special military unit specifically designed to stop the Hulk called the Hulkbusters. Despite the optimism 
optimistic sounding name, the Hulkbusters generally end up on the busted end of the stick with the Hulk going about his smashing ways, barely hindered by their efforts. The true identity of the Red Hulk was unknown for quite a while, during which he racked up a pretty gnarly reputation, killing both Hulk foes Wendigo and Abomination before stealing the power cosmic from Silver Surfer, eventually angering Galactus, who undoes the whole thing. It turns out that Red Hulk is General Ross, who managed to stage his own death. Red Hulk killing himself? It's a life model decoy of General Ross. While bigger and presumably meaner, Big Red isn't ragier, and the original Hulk's been able to get the best of him on more than one occasion. In the end, you just can't beat the original. That's just a short list of bruisers who are bigger but weaker than the Hulk. Who's your favorite big character that might not be Hulk worthy? Do you think we've underestimated someone on this list? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more Marvel content. Thanks for watching.